Hello everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics in vlog number 51. Normally we do check chat with Matt, tech chat with Matt, excuse me, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go over the camera settings for our PTZ Optics cameras. I think this is an important um, video that I've been preparing for for a while, so let's go ahead and dig into this. So we're going to talk about the ideal camera settings for shooting live videos, so for doing live streaming, and we're going to look at a couple different options. So first, we're going to start off with some very basic camera exposure settings, and then we'll dig into deeper, um, deeper, I guess, into the camera settings that we offer. Um, we're, we're basically shutter speed, aperture, and gain. These are the pillars on camera settings. So that's where we want to start before we get into anything more complicated because those that's what we're building upon. So always start with the proper frame rate, shutter speed, and aperture when you're setting up your camera. Then we can adjust the advanced settings for optimal video picture. So now that we've looked at those, let's take a look at the other advanced features that we can talk about and we'll, we'll kind of dig into more detail that have to do with really, you know, fine tuning everything after shutter speed, gain and aperture have been set properly. And we'll talk a little bit later on how to determine what is the proper shutter speed, gain and aperture. But before we do so, just let's start with contrast and then we'll go down. So contrast, what that does is it, it basically is the difference between white and black. So a low contrast will look very kind of faded where your whites and blacks are all kind of faded together. And then a high contrast all the way up to 14 we offer is going to give you very stark differences between whites and blacks. Uh, my tip here would be if, if you want to really get the contrast perfect, you can actually put the camera in black and white mode and imagine that you're doing black and white photography and try to get a very deep depth of uh, contrast where you're getting really nice whites but all the grays in between to a very nice dark pure black. And then you can turn uh, black and white mode off and you'll have perfect contrast. Sharpness is something that allows you to uh, have a picture that's super sharp and shows a lot of detail, but if you go too sharp and you don't have good lighting, you'll start to get um, some graininess. Now, some people, when they're doing video conferencing and they want to kind of have smooth edges, they don't want need to see every stitch in someone's shirt. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll show really quickly a little bit of sharpness here. Um, and I will do that. I'm going to do some quick tutorials along the way here. As you can see in image, I have it set to five, which is like a nice soft, um, a nice soft sharpness. But if I go up on this, and like we said here, we can go up to 15, um, you're going to see a big difference in the sharpness. So let's go up to like 13 here. I have really good lighting in this room. Oh, went too far there. Apologize there. So sharpness nine. Let's just go to, let's say a twelve. You can see how much sharper the image is. Um, it's quite sharp, but it's almost too sharp, and we're getting a little bit of graininess around the sides. So what we want to do is we want to go in image. And honestly, I think I can even take the luminance down one. And I like to have it kind of like a soft sharpness for my webcast so that, you know, you can't, it's almost distracting to see that much detail. Let's go back down to like four. And you'll see that the gain will out additionally. Oh. It's a little sharper, if you can see behind the, behind that there. There, so we're still getting a good, we have the camera in focus and we're still getting a pretty good um, image there. Okay, so gamma is something that you can use to offset uh, the color ranges and that is important for people using green screens. Um, 2D and 3D noise uh, cancellation and reduction allows us to do um, some really nice um, reduction of gain. So reduction of pixelation in low light situations. So if you're in a low light situation, you have you really want to look at 2D and 3D noise cancellation which will We'll show off here. We have wide dynamic range. 
And what that does is that allows you to have the camera compensate for um, two different lighting um, scenarios at the same time. So if you have backlighting problems, the camera will uh, make sure that it's looking for a foreground and a background and compensate for both. And you have uh, zero to eight uh, selections there. Uh, you can turn backlight on and off as well if in low light situations. And then just going from the top to bottom on the left side here, luminance adds additional light to the image. Um, saturation is, has to do with the color, so you can very much desaturate the image so that it's very black and white, or boost the saturation if needed. A lot of people boost the saturation a little bit to have the colors pop. White balance we're definitely going to talk about, and doing an auto white balance is one of the most important things you can do to get the camera tuned to your room. And then we have color balancing as well. If you have a little bit of green or a little bit of red, extra red or blue in your room, you can compensate for that using the color balances. So getting the camera settings perfect is a requirement for live video because we normally don't have a heck of a lot of post-production options. Now in many software, including Wirecast, vMix, and the TriCasters, we do have the ability to make some adjustments. And that's usually a good idea um, in fact, I would highly recommend it um, to complement what you're, what you're doing with your normal um, broadcasting, but uh, on, on a whole, we usually want to be doing um, most, do what, the most popular thing to do is to get all the camera settings right perfectly and then use your streaming software afterwards. So let's take a look at uh, where, which camera settings are most important in which areas. So lighting will be different for each of the four main scenarios that we work in. So live sports, shutter speed, and aperture are going to be most important. Um, in low light situations, uh, shutter speed and gain is going to be more important. Um, in broadcast, really getting that ideal exposure um, could take all three of these. And then in conferencing spaces, normally people like to use um, what I consider uh, automatic, mainly because not because the things can change. But um, those are like the kind of the where this is a kind of your guide to getting the ideal exposure here. So conference spaces are really the easiest spaces we have to deal with, and production studios are usually the next easiest because these areas uh, usually have very good lighting. Live sports is much more difficult because we're dealing with very quick moving objects and we have to bump up the frame rate in order to capture that, that fast moving objects. And then low light is obviously very difficult and requires much more setup for low light situations. So let's talk about aperture. Aperture is also known as f-stop control, and it's basically the opening of the iris and therefore uh, controlling the light that hits the sensor. Sensor. So using a large aperture, which is a small f-stop, I know that's confusing, uh, allows you to have a shallow depth of field. And a shallow depth of field is useful for close-up objects where you want the background to be out of focus. So that's called bokeh. And it's a very great way to do interviews and uh, live streams, and it's actually a nice little Little trick for getting the ideal green screen setting as well because you can kind of blur that green screen background and really get an even color um, and then a small aperture which is a large f-stop allows you to have a larger depth of field so it's great for sporting events or large areas where you want everything in focus now just when we're talking about aperture normally aperture and shutter speed are kind of like hand in hand so to get that shallow depth of field um, normally you have to adjust the shutter speed to let more light in so you can still get that ideal exposure. So to get these tips and these tricks right, you're going to need to balance aperture and shutter speed together. And we offer a good deal of different aperture and f-stops over here, and um, the aperture is the same for 12x and 20x options. So these pictures over here show you a shallow depth of field where things are kind of blurry in the background, and then a deep depth of field where everything, including the city and everything in front, is all in focus. So if you're doing sports, you know you don't want anything to be out of focus. But if you're doing an interview, uh, it might be okay to have the person you're interviewing in, in focus and everyone behind them to just be slightly blurry. Now shutter speed is uh, kind of has the same type of effect in a way. Um, the shutter speed supplies the amount of time it takes the shutter to open and close, which lets 
a different amount of light in depending on how much time the shutter is open. So to use a fast shutter speed, you would want to use uh, for scenes such as sports with a lot of movement. The faster your shutter speed, the less light will come through. So you'll notice that when you adjust your frame rates, the picture will become brighter or darker depending on your speed. So to compensate for that, if you really need a high shutter speed of 1 1 20 or, or 1 100, 1 120th of a second was, was popular in sports. Um, you need to adjust the aperture to allow more light in so that you get a perfect exposure. Keep in mind, the most motion pictures use 24 frames a second. Humans are creatures of habit. So when we see 24 frames a second, that's what we think of as natural uh, movement, even though you know, it, you know, 60 frames could be uh, could be even better for what you're doing. So keep in mind, if you're doing like something cinematic, tw 24 frames a second is um, is ideal, and then 60 frames per second seems to be uh, a new standard coming out for sports and high definition video. So the standard is 24 frames a second at 1 50th of a second shutter speed, and most professionals say this is the na most natural setting. An ideal tip here is to double your uh, frame, take your frame rate that you've decided to use and double it and make that like um, your sh your shutter speed. So 24 frames a second, double it, that's 48. So the next closest would be 1 50th. If you're using 60 frames a second, do 1 120th of a second. That's just a little tip I learned. Um, a low shutter speed can make objects look blurry, where a fast shutter speed will stop moving objects and it's really great for sports, especially when you're doing live video. So we offer shutter speeds all the way down to 1 1 30th of a second, all the way up to 1 10 thousandth of a second, which is only effective in manual mode, um, but you can see all of these in our cameras. Now color balance is extremely important. Again, we're shooting live video here, so if it's not right, it's going out to the world live and we need to get it perfect. So color balance uh, will change the colors, including black and white, rendered in your image. So start with an auto white balance. This can be done in the on-screen display menu. And I can actually do that. This is really important, so I'm gonna do it right now in front of everybody because I think this is gonna be really important. So what you wanna do is you wanna hold up a white sheet of paper. And this sheet of paper is fairly white, right? So we go in here, we go to color, and we hit one push. Oh, that's what's wrong. I have my saturation is too high. Somebody messed with the color settings of my camera. And we hit calculate. And now it says OK. So what's been done there is it's a one push auto setting. I think somebody made my hue too high, too. I have to zoom out to really make sure that's right. but. Now, look at that. So that actually changed a good bit. Um, and I need to change my, now I need to, because of what changed in the color of the image coming out of the camera, I need to, ch I need to change my green screen a little bit. Okay, so that's looking better. Um, in fact, let's see what that hue actually did. Sorry guys, let me just double check this. Maybe I do want a little bit more saturation to give myself a little bit more color. Oop. Let's go back to that one push. So a little bit more saturation there. Okay. Okay, so that's how you do an automatic white balance. Now, I apologize because when you're using a green screen, you really do need to do a little bit of extra work to make sure everything's perfect. Um, but that's how that works. And if you're not using a green screen, that should automatically set everything to be perfect white and black, depending on the lighting that you have. Um, you can use red and green, or sorry, red and blue gain to fine tune and remove unwanted colors from either of those. And you can also use hue and saturation, which we were just playing with. That's really effective for green, getting that green screen just perfect. So color bouncing is crucial for recording live video because there is no post-production option. Many video production systems offer help with color balance, but it's still best practice to handle all of your color, including white balance, in the camera. Um, and you can actually consider using one of these color checkers here to make sure everything is represented po properly um, with the settings that you have. And I just noticed I need to zoom out a little bit on my... There we go. Get everything in 
in the picture properly. Okay. Now, color or camera contrast. Contrast is what adds dimension to your images. Good contrast means your image has a full range of color tones. And on the left hand side of this picture, you can see that it's a little too gray. And there's almost this like cast of grayness throughout the entire image. When the contrast is corrected, everything comes through clear and perfectly. So try setting your camera to black and white. I mentioned this earlier. This will make your job of measuring contrast easier because you only have to worry about getting rich settings for your lights and darks as opposed to you know, having all that color uh, in, you know, basically distracting you. Um, consider the mood that you're trying to convey, and if you're looking for a light and fresh mood, mood, use a lighter gray area, and if you're looking for a dramatic mood, try darker settings. If you use a green screen with chroma key, definitely play with contrast and hue. So, pretty straightforward there, we'll, we'll save some time and keep moving. Uh, finally, noise reduction. So noise reduction is generally defined as uh, aberrant pixels that are not representing the color or exposure properly due to low light. So there's just not enough light for the sensor to pick up the color properly. So what we can do is we can use 2D noise cancellation and reduction um, is ideal for uh, scenes with movement. So if you're doing live sports, this is you definitely want to be looking at 2D noise cancellation. And the technology produces su su uh, superior results for moving objects, whereas 3D noise reduction is ideal for static fields of view. So using both together will really enhance both moving and static imagery. So that's what you're looking at. You can see that something with way too much noise could be have lots of little black specks. And then once we've removed all the noise, even in low light situations, we can get a very clear image. So um, just some basics here for camera settings in a conferencing space. You probably want to set most things to automatic. Um, if there is a window in the room, so the lighting may change slightly, then you just set the camera to automatic and it should be fairly good. Even if you have aperture, shutter speed, and focus set on automatic, you can still tune the color balance to the lights. Um, you can do make small changes to the contrast and hue to get it perfect for your room, but the majority of everything here, especially focus, should all be set on automatic. Now, when we're talking about production, uh, one of the main things that a lot of people do is they say that 60 frames a second is smoother and they like to broadcast in 1080p 60. Um, having a small aperture is usually good because that'll give you that, uh, that deep depth of field and um, you know maybe you want the shutter speed to be automatic and this is a good, good point here. If you have aperture you know, set to a certain thing, you can have the shutter speed automatically set to the ideal exposure. So that the automatic is always searching for the, the ideal exposure. Uh, one tip that I would give people in the production space is to set the focus manually. Uh, you don't want the automatic focus you know, going on something that, in, that may be moving around in your scene and you, you, you probably want to set it to exactly a specific area. Uh, for camera control, you may use the IR remote, but you may also uh, look at a joystick. And then we mentioned this again for, for green screens, uh, we want to adjust contrast and hue. For live sports, we're definitely doing 1080p60. Uh, we're having a very large aperture there so we can get that deep depth of field. Probably doing 1 120th of a second for our shutter speed. Probably setting the focus to manual and that little uh, infinity symbol there is basically fully, um, if you've ever used a camera before with like a digital SLR, that's like making sure everything is in focus. Um, a joystick with a monitor is probably being used and then you're probably using a second camera for a nice wide shot. Um, 60 frames per second is also ideal for post-production and slow motion, for replays, for example. Um, when we're talking about low light, now we're talking about um, having uh, 1080p 30, probably, maybe even lower frame rates. Um, probably opening up that aperture so that we can capture as much light as possible. Um, doing a slow shutter speed, maybe 1 20th of a second is probably too slow or too fast. We probably want to slow that down to something along the lines of 1 30th or 1 60th. Um, you're going to have to play with that because it gets a little bit more difficult in low light situations. So thank you everybody for watching. That has been our 19 minute review. I apologize it took so long. Thank you for watching. We have a complete course on all this information if you want to learn more. Bye everybody. 
As always, uh, thank you for watching our videos. We have new videos every week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have free live streaming courses below, and we have a live stream every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern.